study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com Yeah, go ahead, Izzy. Um, just to the, 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 the question that's being asked um, for Carlos, I have a slightly different um, approach than, than D-Rail. Because D-Rail, you know, tries to use the AA approach of being a sponsor. But for me, um, it can be burdensome. Because I, I think of the, um, the story of the, the Ethiopian that I can't remember which prophet or which um, disciple found him, but he was only there for a moment. It was Philip, okay. He was only there for a moment, um, and the Ethiopian was the one that was actually speaking, you know, for understanding. Um, But Philip, you know, asked the question, do you know, you know, what you're reading? And I think the response was, how will I know unless you tell me something to that effect? Yep. Um, I don't know which, which passage is in, but, you know, in their, in their discussions with each other, um, it came to a point that the Ethiopian said, um, what's preventing me from being baptized in this body of water? And the response is nothing. He got baptized and then Philip was gone. You know, he, he left from that place. It doesn't pick up that, you know, he followed up or there was another encounter. So for me, in the back of my mind, because at the end of the day, you know, we're the only ones that can answer for our sins. At the end of the day, no one is going to be able to vouch for us, except for Yahusha, you know, um, for our salvation, for us to be able to enter into eternal life. When I approach someone and share the gospel, um, I don't tend to follow up immediately or, or really speak after them. I used to, but like I said, it becomes burdensome because they'll either have excuses, they may not Uh, be fully committed, Uh, whatever their issue is, at the end of the day, the scripture says, seek after me and all things will be added to you, you know, take up my yoke or take up, um, uh, follow me and the the yoke will be light, the burden will be light, the yoke will be easy, you know, all of these, all of these sayings you hear in scripture. And when I think of Yahusha and, and Yahuwah referring to us as a light, if you have a light, that you use to read. That light doesn't say, hey, you should read this over again. Hey, you should, you know, look at this. You use the light as a guide for you to see, you know, whatever it is that you're reading. If you're using a light to see on the ground as you're walking, it's not going to shout out, hey, there's a crack right there. Hey, you're, you're about to stumble. It's up to you to use that resource. You, the one that is seeking, to use that resource. So I just want to share that perspective because sometimes, depending on your personality, it can become burdensome trying to um, trying to convince someone to see the truth. They have to want it. They have to have that desire. They have to seek it. So if your daughter, if you're sharing things with your daughter and your daughter, this is in my perspective, if, if your daughter isn't, um, if she's receiving it but not seeking, I don't think, you know, one should feel burdened to, to, to work the salvation for them or to, or to feed them, so to speak, because at the end of the day, you don't want to cash your pearls before swine. So that's just my, my perspective on, you know, depending on the person that you're dealing with, if they're really seeking, if it's really in their heart, you know, to hear the truth, to seek the truth, to live out this thing, you know, the fruit will be in their walk and in your everyday interactions. I don't think we should feel burdensome to do the work for them. They have to do the work. They have to seek out um, yeah. the truth Let for themselves. Me- let me chime in here. So let me bring some admonition to what Ezzy's saying. Um, Good point, Ezzy. So, 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 D-Rail, what D-Rail was talking about is in relation to making disciples and accountability. He's, yeah. D-Rail wasn't saying to go chase everybody down. I think it's, it's in context to 
uh, being able to follow up because that's biblical. Following up and following through is how you make disciples. Nobody makes disciples by disciples falling in their lap. You have to put in the work. Um, however, there's circumstances like the story she brought up with Philip and uh, this Ethiopian. This Ethiopian is from Ethiopia. He's not from the land of Israel. So there's obviously a long distance, geographical long distance uh, 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 situation where discipleship is not really possible, right? So this guy, this guy, this Ethiopian is in town for whatever reason, whether it be a feast, because sometimes a lot of people from other countries would come to Jerusalem for the feast. Well, in the Silk so, Road, yeah. and, after, and after that, he was leaving. So Philip, you know, is not going to chase this guy down because he doesn't live in the area. Um, so there is that once one time opportunity you preach the gospel might never see that person ever again right however what what we're talking about is the conversation the gospel message that he was preaching to that ethiopian because there's a lot that he preached to that ethiopian that we're not showed in that text that story doesn't tell us what conversation he had but he had obviously a long conversation with him because he preached the gospel to him from the book of isaiah which is the scripture uh, the ethiopian was reading from so I wish, I wish we could get insight on what that dialogue was like, but we have to put all the scriptures together and assume that he was preaching against sin, conviction, judgment day, right? All the bad news. He was preaching everything about the bad. What's the bad news? The bad news is that you're a sinner. You're sick in need of a doctor. You're in need of a physician. And guess what? The Messiah came and died. He was, who was prophesied about in that book of Isaiah, which is what you're talking about. Then you go to the good news. So you don't give people good news if they don't fully understand the bad news yet. Because then you're prematurely giving people good news and they don't have an appreciation for the good news. You need to show people the bad news first, right? Like mm -hmm. we were saying about the parachute guy. The bad news is this plane might crash and we're thousands of feet in the air. That's a far fall. I mean, do you want to fall? that without anything here's a parachute that could help you with your fall so after a person understands because we're americans right a lot of people we at this point we we're, we go on flights and we're used to taking planes and we just sometimes we get on the plane like nothing you know we're sitting on a chair not thinking that th thousands of years ago people weren't doing this here we are sitting on a comfortable chair a cushioned chair thousands of feet in the air going hundreds of miles per hour right <laughs> But nobody's thinking about that anymore because we're used to this. We, we, we get on planes. I mean, some people are afraid, but you know what I'm saying? Like on a natural, people just, we're so privileged as Americans. We're so privileged as, as people. We, we don't take time to really consider the severity. So when somebody's coming to us, especially a flight attendant who has authority to speak on emergency situations, if she's telling us to put a parachute on because this plane might crash, you best believe I'm grabbing that parachute real quick. <laughs> There might be a limit of parachutes on the plane. I'm going to try to get the first one I can. So basically what we're, what we're trying to say is, Carlos, your response. So now let me, let me get to something, Ezzy, that's saying that's good. So, and I agree with that. You don't want to push people beyond their limits or be over, you know, overbearing. Right. You know what I mean? Because then, then you are throwing pearls before swine. And the scripture says, don't throw pearls before, before swine, which means... Don't give the gospel message to people who are not going to appreciate it. Okay. But if that's not, if you have a good relationship with your daughter where she is allowing conversation with you when you guys come over, I think that's your open door to continue, be consistent, bring these scriptures and continue to pour in. You know what I mean? Until that light bulb really goes off and that conviction goes on. You know, uh, you, you would be doing a good job you know, in that sense. But if, but if you have like a fan member that's like, dad, stop talking to me already about that. Right. Then that's all right. I'll back off. You know, you've already <laughs> poured in a lot. You preached the gospel to him several times. You know, just back off and, yeah, and, I think, and let y'all do the work. Real quick. I don't, I don't want to take more time. I, 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 I think I, I take in all the points that you guys gave me. I think that every, everyone had its, its place in, in this because like she just, you know, she's one who just, uh, she repents and then she goes away and repents and goes away. And I think to me, uh, you know, uh, well, I don't want to give my, my, my opinion on that, but the way I see it is that like, as he said too, as well, uh, and 
as you said, and, and Brother Derail, you know, everything comes together when it, it, it's, it's all about the word, you know, in, in like John, or like first, like John one through five, you know, uh, that's the healing. That's the, uh, that's, that's the, uh, the, the, uh, what allows a person to, uh, to receive. And it's only at their time no, um, to know when they're ready to receive that word and to, to, to accept it. And, yeah. you know, you can't put pressure on somebody or you can just do is introduce. And well, we can, we can apply pressure. We, we can apply pressure. That's our responsibility is to apply pressure. We, that's our job. Our job is to put the pressure on, but it's not our job to make the decisions for them. And that's where, that's where I would agree with as we can't make anybody do anything, but we can apply the pressure. You can't make a, a horse drink water, but you can put salt in their food that'll make them thirsty. Right. Okay? And when they're thirsty, you would hope that they would have the common sense to drink some water. But guess what? I have authority to put salt in their food. I have access to their food and I can throw some salt in there, which dries up their mouth. Right. So likewise, we, we do what we can. My, my daughter's coming to my house. She knows that I serve Yahuwah in this house and I'm a follower of, the, of Yahuwah now. And I read the Bible in this house. And so when she comes over, she can expect if she's in my house, I'm going to preach to her. I'm going to check in with you out because this is my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, that's all you can do. That's all you can do, man. Pray for your daughter and do these things. And um, also, it's good to read scriptures like we're reading now or the eight signs of repentance that I did. Once I get that up on YouTube, it's good to go over scriptures on examples of repentance in the scriptures. Go over those examples with it. Read, the, read those examples of how people repented, what it looked like, what they were feeling, you know, and uh, hopefully you know, lights go off. Because some people don't have a concept of what repent means. Some people think that repentance just means to say sorry. And so they live a life constantly coming back and saying sorry to God. Oh, God, I'm sorry again. Oh, God, I'm sorry again. Oh, God, I'm sorry again. Not, not understanding that that's not the biblical concept of repentance. You know, so sometimes it may be good to go over those stories. So anyway, you're learning, Carlos. Everybody's learning. You know, as we get more tools, in our in our in our in our tool belt, you know, just try to utilize those tools, using different scriptures to approach different family members, going to you know if they say they believe in the word and just going to oh I just came across this passage I think it might be helpful for my family member try it out, read it with them. You know, it may it may not work, but then you might come across another scripture that Ezzy might bring up or Dero might bring up. You say oh maybe that might be good to read with my family member. You never know. Something might eventually click. Or an event. Or an event. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, but anyway. Let